I can't believe I freaking bought this thing. <laughs> That's sweet. Please share, subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified of when I post a new video. I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and by the way, if you ever decide to pick up anything from Samsung.com, I do have a coupon down below in the description that gives you 5% off your purchase. Hopefully I can save you some money there. This past week, the Samsung Galaxy Fold went on sale in the United States. So with all the controversy, you weren't able to order it online at the Samsung website. You can only get it from AT&T stores and Best Buy. Samsung explained that there is a white glove type of service with a, a higher level of customer service if anything goes wrong. So there, I guess there's like a phone number or something like that in there. So I wanted to find out what that actually looked like when I went to Best Buy. So let's go check it out. I am at Best Buy because my Galaxy Fold is actually in stock. I ordered it last night and it said that it was gonna be available next week, next Friday, but it's actually available today. So let's go get it. There it is, the big, big old Best Buy. I heard there was only five that were sent out. Yeah. Do you know how often people ask about it being in stock? Do you get a lot oh, of questions? Oh, we've been having it all day. Okay, um, it's today. a lot? Yeah. There you are. Have a good one. By the way, this video is sponsored in part by privacy.com and their free service to help protect you against credit card fraud. And if you sign up now through the link in the description, which is privacy.com slash this is tech today, they'll give you $5 for free just for signing up. So go check it out, privacy.com slash this is tech today. So as you can see, this whole white glove service is really just um, the same thing as anything else at Best Buy. You just pre-order it, you order it online. Once it's available for pickup, you just go there, you give them your ID and whatever else, and they give it to you. They didn't, they didn't do anything else. I don't know what the white glove service is other than what you get in the box, so... Maybe they're just trying to not sell as many units. I don't, I don't know. Keep in mind, I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S10 for most of this year, and then I was just recently using the Note 10 Plus. I have a video on this and how Samsung's thinking of merging these two phones together and some context of why they would want to do that. It's pretty interesting. A lot of people are pretty upset about it, but you know, Samsung's the one who's thinking of doing this, not, not me. But either way, go check out that video after you finish watching this video. All right, so we have the Samsung Galaxy Fold here. And this is the unlocked version. All right, so we have our knife here. Let's just open this up. By the way, uh, there's an ASMR unboxing channel for This Is Tech Today. There's a link down below in the description if you wanna check out other crazy unboxings and ridiculous ASMR. I'll add some things to that soon, because you people are crazy and you like it for some reason. So you just pull this tab up. Okay, so the first thing that we see here is care instructions. So it says, do not press the screen with a hard or sharp point object such as a pen, a fingernail, or apply excessive pressure. So that probably explains why we don't have the S Pen. Not only is there not a Wacom digitizer in here, but a pen would probably really mess up the screen. There's actually a video about at least the Wacom portion of it uh, that you can check out up here with Max Weinbeck, who is also a bad influence. <sighs> Thanks, man. It says, uh, when folding the device, do not place any objects such as cards, coins, or keys on the screen. So this is not like a wallet. This device is not water or dust resistant. Do not expose to liquids or small particles. All right, so let's uh, take this thing off. ASMR style. Very interesting. I'm kind of really excited right now. So you can definitely see a little bit of the crease there. And next to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, this is what it looks like. The S10 Plus, this is what it looks like. Let's see what else is in the box here. It's just that. So there's more information here, and then it tells us about the Premiere service. So you have 24 hours of service in case something happens, and then you have a screen replacement offer for one time for $149 plus taxes for a year, which is, I imagine that's probably gonna get used. And this, oh, this is great. Okay, so it actually comes with a case here that fits on the Galaxy Fold, so it has a bit of a carbon fiber type of look to it. 
Then you have some Galaxy Buds, which are actually really great, especially since there's no headphone jack on here. And then you have a charger uh, and some cables. And the thing is, is I believe that this charger is actually slower than the one that you get with the Note 10 Plus. So that's pretty crazy. Let's turn it on. Feels different than like a Gorilla Glass. Oh man, already just typing on this, it's pretty nice. It feels comfortable, like you can just hold it with two hands and type normally. I might be a little bit more convinced than I was before, that's for sure. So it looks like the fingerprint reader is on the edge right here. What will be nice about this is that it's not an in-display fingerprint reader, so it's probably able to recognize my finger a little bit easier than, uh, than the in-display ones. So what's really interesting is when you look at head-on with the screen on, you don't really notice that crease so much. But while it's loading, let's uh, let's finally do it. Let's finally fold it. <laughs> it feels like it shouldn't do that. That is so bizarre. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is so insane. So there's the front too. It feels really small in comparison, like really small. Let's see, here's the S Pen. Oh, that's actually uh, almost the same height. So if you're used to using the S Pen, that's kind of uh, comparable to the height of the outside screen. You almost don't see the screen at all on the outside. You can, like in the right light, you can kind of see a little bit of uh, the cutout for the screen, but otherwise that AMOLED though. What have I done? I bought this thing. <laughs> wow, it looks like it's printed on the screen. Yeah, it is like I am actually touching the screen. I can see it clearly from this angle. This is nuts. This is a really crazy technology. And then... <laughs> that is very satisfying, I'm not gonna lie. How good is the audio? Hey friend, Brandon here. So maybe you or a friend or family member. So one thing that I have also noticed is that the top and bottom speakers are full size speakers. They're actually equal in terms of their strength and sound, which is something that I made a video about up here and how smartphone companies are not doing that. They put different kinds of speakers in the top and the bottom and neither of them are facing in the same direction. It's kind of a really weird kind of disorienting kind of experience, but I explain the science behind sound on your smartphone. But this, at least they're equal and they're oriented in the same way. So you can kind of just see how it's like that way, which is actually kind of nice. This is huge. You watch YouTube here, <laughs> so there's a tiny little screen. Yeah, this screen on the outside looks great too. It's a little bit fuzzy. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's it's like, it's noticeable when you compare it to the inside. This is crazy. I can't even, I don't even notice the crease at all. I seriously cannot even see it. And you know, you can definitely feel a little bit of a divot between the crease. Yeah, I can definitely feel it. It's noticeable, but I really don't see it. And it's pretty smooth. Yeah, I also noticed that uh, you can't make calls from it from from this angle. There's not like a, an earpiece there. I mean, you you probably shouldn't. You'd kind of look like, you'd look like um, a wrench. Yeah, a wrench. You know what I mean. <laughs> Family friendly. So there's actually an earpiece right here. I'll admit that this feels a bit chunky. <laughs> like it's it's kind of a, a brick in a way. So this is definitely gen one. And in many ways we look at old tech and we're like, oh wow, that was just so blocky and chunky. And this is kind of like that. It's it's definitely a, an iteration of the S10 plus and the Note 10 plus. There's definitely some similarities and inspiration there. It's, it's kind of an interesting mesh of the two, right? But it's because it doesn't close completely flat and that it's kind of twice as thick as a normal phone that it has that chunky feeling. You know, I guess it's actually a little bit thinner than the S10 Plus when it's unfolded. And you know how I feel about bezels and I'm so glad that this one has bezels. It's actually really easy to hold and to navigate the interface without bumping into anything. Um, I didn't really notice the notch, the corner notch too much because the screen is so big that it's almost like a, a, a minor afterthought. I'll occasionally notice it during some videos or maybe when I'm looking at an image, but in most cases, the interface, it kind of, compensates for that. I don't really notice it that much at all. And I think us humans are highly adaptive. So 
you know, you'll probably not notice it or pay attention to it after you use it for maybe an hour. So, and in my short time using the Galaxy Fold, there are a few things that really stand out. It's kind of heavy. It's uh, probably about the weight of two phones, which is, it makes sense, it's kind of almost like having two phones. And it's really actually quite comfortable to type on. The keyboard splits up between left and right, and it just makes it so easy and it's just really intuitive. And the form factor is quite nice because of that. And strangely, this is kind of like a nice tablet-like experience, but on the go, and I kind of like that. In fact, when you pull up Instagram, it fills up the screen. And if you're not following me on Instagram at This Is Tech Today, what are you doing? Go follow me, go do that. There's some pictures from uh, the Sony camera camp where I got to hang out with I Justine and Jenna. So the one thing that might be a little bit rough is the display and how you can see it from all these different angles. It's just a really good screen, but it's also a big screen, which means everybody else can kind of see what you're doing, which means you don't have as much privacy, which takes me to this video sponsor, privacy.com, and their free service that helps protect your credit card information from fraud and your personal information. Plus, uh, you get $5 free on your next purchase through them. What's really great about privacy.com is that you can generate one-time use credit cards for those subscriptions that you sign up for, and maybe you just don't want them to charge you again after that free trial. Or maybe you're making a bunch of purchases online for the upcoming holiday season, or you're buying a Galaxy Fold, or you don't want all your personal information leaked out if the store gets hacked, which seems to happen a lot nowadays. Well, privacy.com is a really great way because it creates burner cards. It's super easy to make. You can set up based upon a certain amount every single month or a one-time use amount. And then afterwards, you just deactivate the card. No one else can use it again. That's a great way of protecting yourself your credit, and your identity. I used to work in credit card fraud prevention at the largest bank in America, and I personally use privacy.com. You should totally use it. It's absolutely free, and you get $5 for free on your next purchase. It's a no-brainer. Sign up now by going to privacy.com slash thisistechtoday. That's privacy.com slash thisistechtoday. So a good way of thinking about the Samsung Galaxy Fold is within the context of the device itself, the micro, and then on the macro, what it means for the whole industry. On the micro, it's a bit expensive. It's actually too expensive in my opinion, and most people shouldn't buy it. The only reason why I'm getting it is because I can make videos like this for you, and it makes it makes sense. It makes financial sense for me, but for the everyday person, that probably doesn't make the most sense, right? It's not exactly the same kind of audience that would like the Galaxy Note, because you can't use an S Pen. It's not something that you would sign contracts on. So uh, is it for the business person? Well maybe uh, if you're more about navigating things, you're typing up things, but you're not exactly signing contracts and things like that, right? So it's not really for the S10 Plus type crowd either though, right? Because it's like twice as expensive, if not more. So the real question is who was the Galaxy Fold made for? Perhaps what this is made for is purely a showcase of what Samsung can do for the industry. So if this is actually a showcase for Samsung and their display business and what they can do for other companies, then this is a very interesting thing on the macro level. This is indicative of what we could see going into the future. And because Samsung is innovating, I'm really excited about the Galaxy Fold. I'm glad that this exists. So as a device in itself, should you be super excited about the Galaxy Fold? Um, we, I mean, it's it's exciting. We are so used to having just phones with just a screen. It's just a, a little rectangle, right? So in terms of the stagnation of what's exciting and unique within smartphones, this device, the Galaxy Fold, is very exciting. It's very fun already. So for Samsung, I definitely am very critical of you many times, but the reality is I'm very critical of all phones, including the Pixel 3 XL, which I don't think anybody should buy because it's just kind of a, a software buggy mess and there's not enough RAM on it. But Samsung, in this case, what you have done, I have to give you applause because this is amazing. This is truly, truly innovative. And I'm really excited to see what we have in our future. We have to admit, this is freaking crazy. What the heck? So I'm gonna spend some more time with this and uh, I'd love to know what kind of things you want me to test out. Um, check out more on the screen, the audio maybe. The cameras are the same as like the Note 10 and S10 Plus, so I don't think I really need to talk about that. We've already seen videos on that. Um, but anything else that you haven't heard from anybody else, I'd love to help you out. I'd love to check it out for you. So let me know in the comments down below. And hey, 
we're Discord partnered. So if you're not a part of the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat, you should definitely join it. There's a link down below in the description. We'd love to have you. And uh, I think I'm gonna find out what other people think about this device. I'm just so curious to find out what they think. Plus, who doesn't love this whole closing sound and feel? If you don't know what a flip phone would felt like, you're missing out, but this, this takes me back. Oh, that's so satisfying. This is great. Thank you for uh, watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and all things creative. Until next time.